Yes, no, yes, yes. I thought we were recording, we weren't, so I've had to start again. Um, right, so, second Irish of the night, still Tuesday, 4th of October. And um, this one you probably will have heard of. It is this Tullamore Jew, but actually it should be called Tullamore D-E-W. It was a distillery founded in, funnily enough, Tullamore, which is here, um, not too far away from Kilbegan. It, it only, I think it's only about 20 miles away from Kilbegan, sort of directly south as the crow flies. Uh, it's in uh, County Offaly um, in the centre of Ireland, and it was founded by a guy called Michael Malloy uh, in 1829. But the whiskey itself was named after their general manager, a man called Daniel E. Williams, who looks like this. Daniel E. Williams, D-E-W, Tullamore, D-E-W. But a lot of people, and you actually, if you look at the label, you can see that they do have just about very, very small period points in between. Um, but that is, it's, that's the Jew in um, Tullamore Jew. But obviously everybody, pretty much everybody reads it as Tullamore Jew. Now the distillery was sold in 1953 to uh, Powers Distillery, um, owned by John Power and Sons. And in 1966, Powers became part of the Irish Distillers uh, conglomerate, which was Jameson's and Powers and, shit, I've completely forgotten it. One of the others that we have covered, and I can't remember which one it was, was it Kilbegan? Uh, cork distillers there we go i was not even close um in 1966 and all those distilleries of the conglomerate basically transferred down to the middleton distillery which is here so jameson shut down um, power shut down this shut down everything was being made from the middleton distillery now it was then purchased by uh, a group called the cnc group in 1994 um, who bought it from uh, irish distillers and I had a quick look at what CNC had, and the only thing that was popping out was Magnus, which is the cider brand, which has become quite big. I think Bulmers as well, but I've got a feeling those brands themselves have kind of gone off. It was then sold to William Grants and Sons in 2010 for, I believe, 300 million pounds. Oi, Holly, give up, you pest. You've had a massive drink already, and I'm trying to talk to the nice people that are watching here, and you're disturbing me. Um, so yes, uh, William Grant and Sons now own this. Um, Big Scott Company, we've covered Grants and Glenfiddich and Bounvenny and all the other ones that they've got, and they own Tullamore Jew. So as when they, and, uh, when they bought um, the brand, they actually said that they were planning to um, invest heavily in the brand because it's very big, it's quite big overseas, in America and Europe as well. And uh, in 2014, September 2014, a brand new 35 million euro distillery was opened by William Grants and Sons. So it's, I believe it's pot still and single malt, whether they're doing grain whiskey there as well, I'm not 100% certain. Um, but it's essentially a case of being able to give themselves enough stock to satisfy the demand. Um, so it's a fairly big investment, but obviously 2014, we're looking at a minimum of three years, so we're not looking until 2000, late 2017 before any of their stock can be used in this. So this is still Middleton stock that's being used. Oh, I didn't mention who the donation was from as well. This miniature was from Barry Bradford, um, who I think I need to offer congratulations because I believe that he is, he and his wife are expecting another child. Congratulations, I wish you well. Um, yeah, I think you're fools for having another child and you certainly wouldn't catch me doing it myself. Uh, Barry runs the Whiskey Files blog. Um, if you've not checked out the Whiskey Files, here's the website. Website? <laughs> the website. What the hell is a website? The website. Um, do go and check it out. It's a really good blog and Barry is an absolutely lovely bloke. So um, yes, this is to you and your wife and your um, upcoming child. I think it's their second. because if you were having three you'd be a freaking idiot so Tullamore Jew I have had Tullamore Jew quite a while back um, I think it was when I was working at the whiskey shop I seem to recall it was very very easy drinking but there wasn't a great deal to it but we shall see um, so a nice a good bright color again nice amber color sort of um, oaky Chardonnay almost dessert wine color not too dissimilar to the Titanic that we've just had 40% on this as well Yes. So. Ooh, lemony. Lemon sherbet more than anything else, but it's really quite distinctive lemon. We're not looking at lemon meringue pie. It's not as soft as a lemon meringue pie. It's more 
almost like lemon jelly. But there is a sweetness to it. Now this is a blended whiskey, but there's not a huge, obvious chunk of grain whiskey coming through. But the Titanic was there was the definite grain element. This is this is more kind of honey and lemon and fruit. But it's quite a fresh fruitiness as well. Almost mango as well. Very intriguing. Now that fruitiness comes through as well. Oh, mango, big style. Definite, lemon less so, more mango kicking through. There's a little bit of a bite at the back of the throat as well. That seems to be the grain element to me. But there is a nice juiciness to it. What, I'm not sure whether there's pot still in this as well. I would hazard a guess that there is, judging by the flavor. Plus the fact that Middleton can do pot still and single malt and grain. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's pot still element. My guess would be that there is because there is a slight black currant juiciness type thing. But the overriding fruit on this is mango, definitely. It's, it's a, there is a definite kind of tropical fruit flavor to this. Mango and pineapple and everything before there's a slight bite at the back of the throat, which is more of a grain whiskey element and then a little bit of the juiciness of pot still. I'm almost getting a little bit of mint as well. Almost like it's a cocktail that you have when you're on holiday and you're in the tropics or you're in the Caribbean and they give you a, a lovely fresh fruit cocktail that they made that's got booze in it. Probably rum with pineapple and banana and mango and then some fresh mint in the top. And it's either blended together as a kind of smoothie or they just throw the whole lot in. That's nice. It's very, very smooth. There's enough of a bite to it from the grain whiskey that's just make, if, if it didn't have that, it would be too smooth and it would just disappear. But there's enough of a hit to kind of lift everything back up on the finish. Otherwise it would feel a little bit flabby. But the, the tropical fruit feel to it in the middle of the palate, really nice. Mm, definitely. This would work pretty well in the cocktails as well. Also, out the fridge, slightly chilled out the fridge on a summer's day, I think would work really, really well. And as much as it pains me to say, do you know what, this, not with ice cubes, do you know what I put this with? Crushed ice. A decent shot of this with crushed ice so that it starts to water down, and I, I hate doing that, but I think it would actually work as a sort of semi-long drink. Um, maybe topped up with soda, might dilute it a little bit too much. If you got the balance right though, I think it would probably work. But yeah, certainly as a cocktail whiskey, but to be perfectly honest, there is enough here for me to drink neat and actually really enjoy. It's probably a little bit fruity and a little bit sweet for some people. Either drinkers aren't gonna wanna know, it's gonna be too sweet. I think some people might find it a little bit sickly sweet. To me, it's not quite, too, it's not too sickly. It's more of a tropical sweetness rather than a sugary sweetness. But I could kind of understand how some people might actually think it's a bit too sickly. It's just about the right balance for me though. It's nice, it's different. It's slightly unusual as well. I haven't come across many whiskies that have had that tropical feel to it. I think it might put some people off just because of the, the, the obvious sweetness that's there that I think might be a bit too cloying for some, but I'm really enjoying that. And like I say, there's enough of a bite to it that it doesn't get too claggy at the back of the throat. Very easy drinking, drinks well neat, but I really do think this is a good whiskey for, for cocktails, mixing, all of that lot. But I think as a, as a long drink or as a drink out the fridge, just to lift it a little bit more with the chilling, to make it slightly easier to drink, but as long as it maintains those fruity flavors that are in there, that's nice. That's nice, that. You're looking at, oh, I didn't even tell you how much it was. That's the full size bottle, um, but I didn't actually see what the price was and I should have done. I do apologize. So bear with me for two minutes while I, what am I doing? Tullamore Distillery, no, I want the price. Tullamore Jew, there we go. The Whiskey Exchange are selling it for da, 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 23 quid, which I think is perfectly reasonable. I think that's a good price for what is actually a pretty good Irish blended whiskey. So, 
tell them what you do. Get your hands on it. It's well worth checking out. I like that a lot. Um, right, that's me done for the night. See if the baby turns up, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.